Good morning. From Seoul. For our first day here, we're actually going to be heading out of the city to do a tour of the Demilitarized Zone, also known as the DMZ. I am so excited to learn more about Korean history, and today will be specifically modern Korean history. But before we do anything else, coffee. <laughs> We've just met up with our tour group and we're on the bus, so I'm excited to see what this day has in store for us. The Demilitarized Zone, aka the DMZ, is a heavily restricted 250 km long border dividing North Korea from South Korea along the 38th parallel. In the wake of a ceasefire signed by the two countries in 1953, it was agreed that a 4 km wide zone tracing the north-south border would be established as a means of ensuring that further outbreaks of conflict could be avoided as much as possible. To this day, while there is technically military presence on both sides of this zone, it is regulated and guarded by the armies of both countries as well as UN peacekeeping forces. As a result, while we were able to see a lot of things, we were unfortunately somewhat restricted on what we could film. What you will see from here on in is what we were allowed to show. anyone who's thinking that a tour might not be worth it because you can't visit the Joint Security Area, otherwise known as JSA, that is 100% not true. The only place we've come to so far and are standing in right now is called Kim Jinga Park and already the tour has been so worth it. So the reason that you're not allowed to go to the JSA right not now, real, if you bro. haven't been reading the news, is because an American soldier decided to use this as an opportunity to go into North Korea. Obviously, that is 100% not allowed. And because he did that without any approval whatsoever, this is now why we can't have nice things. <laughs> This is why we can't have nice things. To give you a little bit of historical context for those of you who are not that read up about the Korean War, we definitely weren't before we were on this tour. Korea was a republic for many, many centuries, including through medieval times, up until 1910 when it was then occupied by the Japanese. The Japanese then occupied this until 1945 when obviously we know what happened in World War II and they unconditionally surrendered. That left Korea being completely independent again, but with zero political power. So much in the same way as with Germany, then the allied powers who had won the war decided to divide Korea amongst themselves. So the USSR took the north and the Americans took the south with different ideologies, then obviously that led to conflict and a de facto Cold War, much in the same way as with Germany. But unlike in Germany, where they didn't act upon anything, they did act on it in Korea. The North, backed by both the USSR and China, decided that they would try to invade the South so that it could be one unified communist country. That didn't work so well. The initial plan was that it was all going to be over within the space of two weeks, but people being people, the South then fought back, regained its territory, and the war ended up lasting a full three years, up until the point that there was a ceasefire declared. However, the division is still very prevalent even to this day. There is hope 
of unification at some point. But with incidents like this American who decided to use the JSA for his own gain, then it doesn't look especially likely at this current point. Where we are at right now is kind of the start of the DMZ officially. This is where the tour guides actually have to get tickets in the first place so that we can even explore this area. And around here as well, this is amazing because not only was there the Freedom Bridge, where a number of Korean military prisoners were exchanged as a result of the ceasefire, but there's also a bunch of memorials that highlight, one, the horrors of the war up to now, but also the fallout of the division of Korea. What we're currently stood between right now is a memorial to displaced Koreans who found themselves on kind of the wrong side of the division and just happened to be that way for a while. That is for, to commemorate five million people who ended up defecting or wanted to defect from the north to the south. And then there's another one which is about the divided families. Apparently there are, what was it? 10 million divided families and only 10,000 of them have been able to reunite in some form. And yep. that could be temporary or permanent. Exactly. So the proportion is absolutely crazy. On top of that, we've also been past a train that was trying to get out of the north into the south, I think it was. And it got absolutely shredded by bullet fire. The wheels are completely cacked out as well. And apparently there's like over a thousand bullet holes in this one train, which is insane to think about and then on top of that there is another thing which harks back to japanese occupation which is a memorial to those that were affected by sexual slavery so there's a lot of harrowing stuff here to start the tour off but it definitely does help to bring about kind of the gravity of the situation because to some people it might be history but some of the stuff is still ongoing and there's a whole other side to this park that we're going to go take a look at now. But you have to do a DMZ tour. We're just at the start and we've already learned about so much history and how the history has impacted the people and how that's still ongoing. And it's just fascinating. Yeah. And while we're here, we might as well give props to our tour guide. His name is Jun. He is absolutely fantastic so far and really, really looking forward to learning a lot more from him as the day goes on. Behind me is the train that used to transport Koreans from here all the way to Europe. So obviously it could go from Korea to China to Russia and then into Europe. And apparently Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, was just in Moscow recently and he was able to use this train to get there. However, because of this arbitrary division that happened, the South has been completely cut off from being able to do this trip. So the hope is that one day all of Korea will be reunited and everyone, including those who live in the South, will be able to make the trip on this train from Korea all the way to Europe. And the train is called the Iron Horse, so what is written here on this statue is let the Iron Horse run again.
currently at the Dora Observatory and what makes this place famous is this is the one viewpoint from which you can see from South Korea into North Korea and you can see quite a lot so alongside like actual industrial zones and things like that that are designated by the North Korean government there is a 160 meter long flagpole which has a North Korean flag and just opposite that on the other side you also have a South Korean flag which is 100 meters there was apparently a flag war de facto where they were trying to outdo each other for a little bit they went higher at first and then eventually they went bigger on the flag Exactly, um, but not that far away from the South Korean flag is actually the building where the armistice was signed in 1953 and that is the current place of the JSA. And then very close to the North Korean flag, there is a propaganda village and no one actually lives there, but occasionally they will bring actors or soldiers in when they're doing tours so it looks like they live there it is kind of hard to get a clear picture on your camera because it is still a significant distance away but there are tons of free telescopes and if you look through those you can definitely take a look at what's going on on the other side of the border the crazy thing with the propaganda village though is that Alongside houses, which you definitely can't see into, there are definitely some high-rises, but they are literal shells of buildings. Seemingly, there's no kind of evidence of stairs or an elevator or anything like that. It's literally just a casing of a building, and it clearly shows that no one is actually in there at all. It's really, really weird, but yeah, fascinating all the same. We've just been down into the third tunnel and unfortunately you're not allowed to take photos or film. But what we can say is that it was a tight and narrow squeeze. It is two meters high and two meters wide, although I think you would say that's questionable since you're just under two meters and you definitely were ducking the entire time. Basically what the third tunnel is, is a tunnel that the North Koreans dug from their side of the border across to the South Korean side of the border. And the end point for this tunnel presumably was meant to be Seoul, which is the capital of South Korea. However, it was discovered before it ever reached Seoul because a North Korean defector, who I think was actually the designer of the tunnel, when he defected, he told them about it. And this is just one of four tunnels that they have discovered going from North Korea to South Korea that the North Koreans were going to use to invade the South. However, they're pretty sure that there are several more that remain undiscovered at this point. We're almost back at our Airbnb after a very full day of touring. We left at like, I don't know, 30 five-ish I don't know and it's probably like 5 15 p.m. now well worth well worth it to go on the DMZ tour 100% obviously it is still a shame that we couldn't have gone to the JSA but even without that this has been a very very good day out we've learned so much about the history of this country and about kind of the general culture and the sentiment about what's going on yeah and um, and yeah honestly even in its current state, it's well worth a visit. We've just picked up some onigiri, you know, our favorite thing from the convenience store. So we're just going to have dinner in tonight. We know that's not Korean. We do completely recognize that. We promise you that starting tomorrow, we are going to start eating actual Korean food. But yeah, we just need something simple and we need to just kind of get our breath back because I think we're still recovering from that long travel day that we had. Travel days. Travel days. So we're going to do that, but that about wraps it up for today. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>